Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Very nice to have you with us. Episode number 238 of This Week in WordPress. You can see on the screen that I'm joined by three fabulous individuals from actually, yeah, pretty much all over the world today. It's quite nice. Uh, first of all, Michelle. How are you doing, Michelle? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, very well. Michelle Frechette, good. you've probably seen on this podcast, as well as really all over the internet, because as you're about to hear, <laughs> Michelle is... Well, let's just say she's relatively busy. She is, first off, the Director of Community Engagement for Stella WP at Liquid Web. She's also been recently called, I was there, I was in the room, she was called the busiest woman in WordPress by Matt Mollenweg at WordCamp US 2022. Uh, in addition to her work at Stella WP, Michelle is the podcast barista at WP Coffee Talk. She's the co-founder of Underrepresented in Tech, creator of WP Career Pages, president and of the board for Big Orange Hearts, director of community relations and contributor at poststatus.com, co-host of the WP Motivate podcast, author, business coach, and frequent organizer and speaker at WordPress events. She lives outside of Rochester, New York. She's an avid nature photographer. And if you want to learn more about her, you can go to meetmichelle.online. I've got to ask, Michelle, does, do you yes. have, like, when you work in an office, you have this in tray and out tray sort of thing. And hopefully they kind of balance out, you know, the in tray and the out tray kind of have this sort of seesaw effect and one never gets, mm -hmm. yours seems to just get fuller on one side. <laughs> do, you, do you ever, do you ever sort of drop projects or do you just sort of keep them all, do you just add them in and keep adding them in? Oh, uh, there's times, I mean, I, I deprecate things just like other people do, right? <laughs> there are things that no longer serve or there are things that it's time to sunset. Yeah. And so, yes, of yeah. course I do those, I yeah. do that as well. Well, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. Mm, also, we're joined. So um, I'm in the UK. Michelle is in the US. We've got Katie Keith. Hi, Katie. Hi. Katie's in Mallorca. Now, you've got to forgive me, Katie. I'm going to say it's part of Spain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Spanish good. island, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, she's there at the moment. She's the co-founder and CEO of Barn2 Plugins. Uh, she loves finding ideas for new and unique plugins that help people achieve new things in WordPress and WooCommerce. Originally from the UK, she now lives in sunny Mallorca. Sp oh, it says Spain, sorry. <laughs> and can be found paddleboarding in the sea or hiking in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Was that kind of part of the reason of going there, just to adopt more of that lifestyle? Because with the best will in the world... You are hard pushed to do paddle boarding and mountaineering in the UK. Yeah, oh, I did manage that in the UK, but would often be rained off and it's yeah. more seasonal, of course. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. But you're enjoying living there, I guess. Mm, it's good. People don't realise how beautiful and mountainous it is. They just think of the kind of um, Magaluf style tourist resorts and it's a lot more than that. Well, thank you for joining us. And uh, anybody that is curious to know what Katie's plugins do, go and check them out. Barn2, Google that, Barn2 plugins, and you'll see a suite of things all for WooCommerce, which is handy because there's tons of WooCommerce stuff in the news this week by coincidence. So that's kind of nice. And finally, we're joined by Rob Cairns. Hello, Rob. How are you doing? And he, third of our co-host today, I guess, he's, uh, he's from Toronto in Canada. So we've got everybody's in a different spot on the world. How are you doing, Rob? You all right? Doing well, Nathan. Thanks for having me. You're so welcome. Rob is the co-founder, CEO, chief creator of Amazing Ideas at Stunning Digital Marketing. He's the creator of the SDM podcast show and co-moderator of the WordPress Global Product Group on LinkedIn. When he's not playing with WordPress, he can be found enjoying sports in Niagara Falls and reading. It actually says in Niagara Falls. I, I wonder, do you literally go in Niagara Falls? No, I go visit those who don't know oh, Niagara see. Falls region oh. is about 90 minutes from Toronto, and we were just there at the Ice Wine Festival. So weekend. is Niagara Falls not only a waterfall, it's the name of a town, right? Yes, it is. Okay. It's two okay. towns. Yeah. Yeah. There's oh, one in the okay. US and one in Canada. Oh, yeah. That's right. It's right on the border, isn't it? And if you're on the American mm -hmm. side and want to look at the waterfall, you have to go to that sort of half bridge, which sort of jots out and never uh, has a destination. It just comes out of <laughs> it. Br it is the bridge to nowhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on the Canadian <laughs> side, you can see the full the full beauty of it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I get it now in Niagara Falls. Actually, Rob, whilst we're at it, um, you, you had a sort of something that you wanted to mention concerning your podcast. We've just mentioned the SDM 
uh, show podcast. Why not? Yeah. Why not do it now? Tell us about your little epoch coming up. Sure. Um, we just published episode two ninety seven this morning. A week Tuesday, I will be hitting the magic episode three hundred. So. Oh. I've- Puts me in a little bit of, I think, Nathan, you're already there. And our, our dear friend, Bob Dunn, is already there. So I'm not far behind. So it's oh. so I remember the remember when I got to a hundred, I made a real fuss of it. And I, um, I, I made like this massive competition and we gave away something like $16,000 worth of plugins and themes and all that. And honestly, it took me a week to clear up yeah. who won what. <laughs> I said, I'm not doing that again. And then 200 came around, not even mentioned. <laughs> and then 300 yeah. more recently. No, just just move on. Uh, so, yeah. But, well, anyway, congratulations. That is a big milestone. Thank you I really so much. appreciate it. Um, right, a couple of bits of advertising from me. I hope you don't mind, everybody. But the first thing is just to say, here's our website, wpbuilds.com. If you fancy subscribing to the bits and the pieces that we do um, and you enjoy the show, the best way to do that is either to go to your podcast player of choice and search for WP Builds. These days, podcast players are clever enough to pick up on just searches. You don't usually need an RSS feed, but uh, try that. And if failing that, if that doesn't work, you can go to our subscribe page, which is in this link here. Or if you just want to keep updated with the content as we push it out, typically two episodes a week, this thing on a Monday, which actually comes out on a Tuesday, because as soon as it's finished, I edit it and what have you. Um, and then we have the podcast on a Thursday. But if you're clicking here, we'll send you an email just saying that that has happened. So that's the first bit of advertising. The second bit, forgive me, is um, Page Builder Summit. Page Builder Summit is coming back round again. Uh, it's the 20th to the 24th of February. Excuse me, February this year. So, yeah, a little over about a month away, just slightly under a month. We've got loads of speakers lined up. All the speaker roster has basically been settled, but we're still interested in uh, having a few sponsors. Uh, if you fancy doing that, this is the page to go to. You can find it at pagebuildersummit.com forward slash sponsors. I'll say that again pagebuildersummit.com forward slash sponsors with an S on the end, so plural. And uh, yeah, go and have a look around. I'm happy to say that uh, Cadence has uh, actually sponsored us, which is really nice. You can sort of see a little bit further down. Just there, look, there's one of our sponsors. Thus far, we've got the ones that you can see, 20i Cadence and various other ones as well. So very appreciative to those. But if you fancy joining us for the for the ride, it's happening in a few weeks' time. We'll be opening the waitlist page for those people that want to actually attend the event uh, in a few days' time. So, okay, there we go. Right, let's get on with the WordPress news for this week, shall we? It's quite a lot, actually. We've got lots of news items. It depends how deep we go into them. We might get to them all, we might not, but let's start here. This is a piece on the WP Tavern. It's called, uh, it's by Sarah Gooding. It's called WordPress Project Aims to Complete Customization Phase and Begin Exploring Collaboration in 2023. This teeny tiny little article, well, I say that. I mean, she, she writes really long pieces, but this one's one of the shorter ones. It actually contains an awful lot of information about the upcoming year uh, in broad brushstrokes. Josepha hayden Chomposi, who is the executive director of the WordPress project, has said that phase two is sort of drawing to a close. And phase two is all about uh, full site editing, those kind of things, block patterns, the way that it's presented on the page. And now we're going to be moving on to phase three at some point. I'm not entirely sure from this article when that transition is likely to happen, but maybe it's after 6.2 is released. And phase three is a really exciting one because it involves collaboration, aka Google Docs. So the idea being that you would open up a document and be able to concurrently edit it along with various other people. There's more to it than that. There's all sorts of rules around who can edit what and what state they're in, whether it's in a draft and whether you're an editor. And so it gets quite, kind of complex, but they're trying to figure out what that will be. Also, the hope is that in three, these are some cool items. Uh, open versus search in core. So open versus freely available images. And the idea you'd be able to search from within your WordPress install and get some free Im images, of which Michelle has contributed a lot. Uh, improvements to the navigation block, which I'm pretty sure everybody could agree if you've used it, could still do with a little bit of work. Uh, media management, there's going to be quite a lot of updates to the media library. And so in two minutes, I've basically outlined a dramatic amount that's going to change 
in WordPress, hopefully in the next phase. I've said enough. If anybody wants to comment, one of you three, jump in. I love to, Nathan. Um, one of the things for me is the media management library. I think the media library has been neglected for a long time because it's kind of not the sexy WordPress project and it needs an overhaul. So for me, that's a big deal. I'm glad we're finally getting to it. So that's a piece of good news. Yeah. I'm, when I came to WordPress, I came from Drupal. And it, it basically, I think, I'm pretty sure in saying that in the time that I've been in WordPress, the media library in its in the way it looks hasn't really changed. At the time I moved over, it was, it was a revelation. It was so much better than what we had in Drupal, but it hasn't changed a lot. So much so that I install a plugin to make it a little bit easier to manage. It's called Happy Files. It's by the guy who creates the Bricks <laughs> page builder and it allows things like you can just put folders and things like that and so you can store your images in in places where you can remember where you put them because once you've got like i don't know for for wp built i think we've got about 1600 images something like that it's pretty hard to to keep a track on what went where and all of that kind of stuff so it really does help but yeah that's a really cool piece right katie or michelle i love the idea of adding the open verse into core because so often i'm like going back and forth between places to find images, free images, and uh, being able to do that, I think, is really going to be good. I was just looking at the photo directory. We have over 5,600 published Ooh. photos in the photo directory, and, and uh, we cleared the queue on Friday. I'm one of the photo moderators, and we have 45 new photos to review and either you know, put it, uh, deny or approve. We do get some bad apples who are used, who are submitting stock imagery and things like that. So only submit your own photos, people. But um... do, you, do you have to do a manual check of each one then to determine if it's basically taken from, I don't know, Getty images or somewhere else? We don't check everyone. Mm. We go with our gut. And if it looks like it's too stock imagery, uh, we will check them just to, yeah. and I've, I've discovered probably a dozen or more just in the last few months of people trying to submit stock imagery. Okay. So, or or blatant Michelle, advertising. <laughs> yeah. But also, Michelle, I noticed that your contribution to the, uh, the photo library is not in your introduction to this podcast. So, no, uh, I better get on that. <laughs> yeah, come on. There's not enough in there. <laughs> okay. Katie, anything there which piques your interest? Yeah, I'm excited about the collaboration side of things, um, particularly on uh, posts. Um, I don't know exactly what the detail of what's coming, but that does need improving, like people submitting work and feeding back. And if, I'd, I, what I'd love to see would be, um, you know, when you edit an existing post, you might want to save a copy of it as a draft for, for people to check and then use that to override the live post and currently the only way I know to do that is I think it's the duplicator plugin you can do that um, and I feel that that's quite a common thing that should be part of core. Um, I'm gonna it, this is sort of self-promotion but it, it isn't intended to be self-promotion I did a podcast episode with uh, Steve Burge uh, this is going back before Christmas December the 7th it looks like and he taught he goes into real detail about where he thinks we're at at the moment because there's this is with um, with the collaborative editing, and he thinks it's going to be a really difficult task to pull off, largely because of the different infrastructure that all of us have. You know, if you're on a very modest, tiny little hosting company, who and you're paying them a very small amount of money, you can imagine the complexity of things syncing here, there, and everywhere. And I don't know, imagine sort of seven people trying to edit things at the same time. It could be could be a difficult proposition. We're so used to things like Google Docs, who obviously have the most gigantic infrastructure imaginable, and the same would be true of Microsoft and whatever platform uh, typically can do this. So he, he's convinced it's it's technically possible, but it's going to be a really difficult piece to play. One of the things that he thought may happen, and I think this is quite curious, is that you would concurrently edit just a single block at a time. So you imagine that you've got a, a, a body of text and it's made up of 50 paragraphs. It might be that, they, that they're going to explore the idea of just if you concurrently edit one paragraph at a time and then you sort of move on to the next paragraph and the next paragraph. So it's not trying to pull the whole document all at the same time. But it's pretty transformational, isn't it? If you think about it, there's a lot going on there. The idea of... Um, 
collaborative editing, a complete overhaul of the um, the media library, the navigation block getting improvement, and the openverse. That's a ton to ton to do. I got to ask though. Do, do if any of you have been playing with what we've done in phase two, which is all of the stuff surrounding full site editing and so on, do you feel that's finished? Because I, I kind of feel we're sort of halfway there with that, but maybe the community feel that actually enough has been done already. I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that, whether phase two really should be coming to a close. I don't think it's done yet, Nathan. Um, I do... Uh a mastermind group on Fridays where we talk about full site editing that's led by Brian Gardner over at WP engine. And um, I, that group tends to concede that we're not quite there either. When we talk about FSC and blocks and all that stuff, I think there's a lot of work to do. And I think honestly, they're jumping ahead of themselves at this point. So I think we would be better doing phase three for some ties to pretty well locked down in my opinion, but, yeah, I do. No. do oh, a bit of echo there. I don't know where that came from, but hopefully that wasn't too loud for everybody else. I do. I do think maybe they just have to draw a line under the sand and say, "Okay, we've done enough. We can we can carry on doing that." But um, equally, at the same time, we've got to move on and do the other promised things. Phase four, of course, that'll be several years off by now. That's going to be multilingual bits and pieces. Uh, so, okay, there we go. Thank you. A couple of comments coming in. I did forget. I forgot Peter Ingersoll was going to deliver his weekly weather report. Um, so we might as well get that out of the way. Forgive my camera. It seems to be going berserkers. I don't know if that's just yes. me, but... Uh, oh, that's kind of weird. I'll deal with that in a minute. He says, Monday, it's one degree centigrade, 34 here in Connecticut. We are under winter weather advisory. That doesn't sound good. Uh, so our current cold rain could turn into snow some parts of the state. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's cold and cloudy here, but then that's six months of the UK. Not much more to add, but I appreciate you coming each week and telling us all about it. Thank you very much. Also, we've got Lana. Hi, Lana. She says, good evening. Oh, I wonder where you are if it's the evening. That's interesting. And we've got Disha saying, hi, Rob. And hi hey, to Disha. everyone. Yay. Do you know Disha, Rob? That's good. I do. Very much uh, so. Oh, great. Um, okay, well, we'll move on to the next piece. I'll try and fix my camera while we're doing things. I haven't the faintest idea what could possibly be wrong. It's never gone wrong before. But my well, Mac you know, did... It, it, unplug it, plug it back in. Yeah, that's, that's what I will raise, do. I mean... <gasps> <laughs> Michelle, look what happened. It's you gone. spoke and it fixed itself. I swear my hands didn't I'm touch magic. Anything. I'm magic. <laughs> that is kind of eerie. Um, but my Mac Add did super crash tech earlier on. today. My Mac never oh. crashes. And it went full never green screen ever. today. And I haven't seen that before. So, well, not for a very, very long time. So maybe there is something something stranger for it. Lana says she's in the Ukraine. Uh, he, she, apologies. I don't um but hello lana very nice to have you with us right let's move on to the next story here we go right we now moving on to this one this is just a cosmetic thing but i think it's quite a nice thing to mention if you go to the themes page very often it's quite likely that you're really familiar with the interface you've probably seen it a gazillion times before and it's just that's the way it's always been right well hopefully not for much longer as because it says here we've got an article called a refresh of the wordpress.org themes page as part of a broader proj uh, project to reimagine the visual appearance functionality and other elements of wordpress.org the website one of the next focus areas is the wordpress themes directory my camera is now glitching again I michelle you must begin talking again sorry <laughs> um and this is the intended now I, 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 when i say intended i really don't know how much weight that carries i don't know if this is just a kind of proposal or somebody saying wouldn't it be nice if it looked like this but i'm showing it on the screen now for those of you that are listening to this on the audio essentially it's all black with the new wordpress blue that we're all familiar with giant um, kind of italicized serif font saying themes. It's pretty full on. You can't miss it. It's pretty much punching you in the face. And then a very minimal layout with a um, couple of icons of different images to left and to right, some iconography underneath giving you ideas about uh, different ways that you can use tones on them and things like that. And then there's a great big filter option where you can sort of filter down, uh, as you might imagine. Clearly, I was just showing it because I thought it was quite nice. I don't know if any of you have got any opinions if you do yell them now um, and i will try and fix my camera i think so it looks great i 
I think it's funny. I was I was running our local meetup a couple weeks ago and was reminded what it's like to be new to WordPress when somebody who was new to WordPress said, I don't understand. I keep trying these themes and none of them look like they do when in, in the yeah. in the directory. And I said, Oh, welcome to WordPress. <laughs> yeah, they're not I, look I like agree you. with you. You gotta play. <laughs> I, I agree with you, Michelle. It looks really great. And by the way, just to while we're talking to take a poke at Nathan, I think the episode title needs to be what happens when my camera goes bad, but that's. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, there we go. It should be, there we go. It's back. Whether or not it will stay back. I don't know. Sorry. Right. I'm going to write that one down. What happens when my camera goes bad? <laughs> yeah. Um, Katie, every, every episode I try to come up with the most unusual or interesting line that's said in the episode so at the minute i think that's leading the way i write that one down katie what do you think about this um, new design i love the font because it says design it the the concept of themes is supposed to be visual i know themes have moved on way beyond the visual but in theory it's a skin isn't it um, and so I really like the way they've used such an artistic font. Um, the lack of space around the edge upsets me a bit, though, I must admit. Ah, <laughs> it's actually touching the edge of the page. Just here. I'm sure that's intentional. Yeah. Yeah, I do know what you mean. It is It is definitely putting the images sort of front and centre, isn't it? It's making those the big thing. But then again, I guess if they were making those front and centre, they'd probably just have one at a time. I have to yeah, say I in the past, I found it a little bit tricky to, I don't know what the navigation will be like or what the defaults will be like, but I've, I've never really kind of understood how what is on the home page, the first page, if you like, never kind of really understood what I was being shown, um, you know, whether it was download counts or whatever the criteria may be. So having all these different filter options, especially if you could somehow save them so that when you came back, the same filters always applied, set as a cookie or something, that might be quite interesting. Sorry, Katie, I feel I might have interrupted you. Um, no, yeah, I think the grid works really well, and I love the filters because it is hard to narrow them down sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, for example, some of them are quite 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 helpful so we've got things like accessibility ready block editor patterns available block editor styles uh, whether it's suitable for body press and so on and so forth you know the the usual things that you might see i guess but i like it looks really nice so hopefully coming to a website near you at some point in the near future we'll have a, a newly designed wordpress themes area of course you'll have seen this similar design there's a couple of sections where a couple of areas of the WordPress site where this has happened before. Uh, it mentions it in the article here, the showcase area or the news area as well has got something quite similar. So following on from a similar pattern. Okay, right. A bit of stellar news for you. I think Michelle is probably going to be the best person to take this on, but I'd also be curious to know what Katie thinks, given that she's very much in the sort of e-commerce, WooCommerce space. So this came out the blue to me, at least this week. Um, Cadence have offered I have joined forces with Shortcut, and I don't really know a lot about Shortcut, except that when I look at their logo, I immediately think Spotify. Um, which, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Is it me or is yeah. it just that? Oh, look, Spotify. Uh, why is Cadence doing things with Spotify? So it's the article is entitled <laughs> Sell Your Design Library Using Cadence Cloud and Shortcut. A feature of Cadence Cloud is the ability to um, create templates, if you like, libraries using the cloud, and now you'll be able to sell them with this new Shortcut platform. Uh, it integrates the two so that you can easily essentially put your assets together and then flog it from the cloud. Um, but mm -hmm. do you know a great deal more about this? I've just broadly um, said what's going on. You know, you pretty much took the words out of my mouth with that. But uh, no, what I think is really cool about it is, and you know, with the Page Builder Summit coming up, you can certainly attest to this, that Good page builders have, eco you know, economies growing up around them um, and ecosystems growing up around them. And and to be able to, you know, I, I created a Meet Michelle dot online because I wanted to have my own link tree, but I didn't want to rely on link tree. And so somebody else took that idea and created templates around that idea and and now is part of the ecosystem you know, designing these templates and things like that. And so when you have that kind of thing happening where you can actually create it within your own website and then sell it through an add-on like Shortcard, I think it's pretty awesome that you can make it that seamless. It says that um, it was it came out as a result of user requests. So I'm guessing mm -hmm. 
there's a bunch of your users who not only are using the cloud for creating these templates, but obviously feel there's a need to sell them mm -hmm. and presumably are Shorecart users as well. I don't know that Shorecart has been around for the longest of times. You, mm -mm. Anybody that can help me out on this, but I think it was an initiative. Was it Adam Prizer and Brainstorm Force? That's what's in my head for no reason at all. I don't know if that's true or not, but I don't know if it's, they're still custodians of it. I'm not certain. It no. must be new. You're right, it's Adam. I've remembered now. He, I was talking to him about it at WordCamp US in September, and it wasn't launched at that point. So, yeah, it's pretty new. Um, so it's interesting. It's got over 3,000 installations already, and it's uh, growing quickly. Yeah, so that's the Shorecart plugin. So this mm. is obviously an, some kind of alternative to... Uh, to WooCommerce or what have you. So if, if anybody's in the comments wants to tell us about it, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. But it looks like if you are a Cadence um, full bundle subscriber, if you've got the the full suite of their products, you can get this Shorecar add-on um, as a version one for free. It says there's no additional charge for using this add-on plugin. It's just another benefit of the full bundle. I don't know if it's a paid add-on if you're not part of the full bundle or not, but just uh, just an interesting idea. I feel there's a whole bunch of people out there. In fact, in the uh, in the comments, there's uh, there's one happy customer, Michael, who says he's happy because uh, it's now everything he needs to put together his website. So, at least for what Michael, a great anyway. testimonial. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's perfect. So there you go. If you're a Cadence customer and you want to sell stuff online, templates and so on, you've now got mm -hmm. a Shortcut integration. Maybe we should cover Shortcut at some point and see what that's all about. Um. Rob, anything, or shall I move on? Yeah, the only thing I would add is I think we're going to see more of this kind of partnership because the only way for some of these plugins to grow, like Surecard, is either partner with an existing builder or something or to be bought. So I think this is going to be one in many we're going to see this year, personally. Bye. Do you remember, Do you remember? like, I'm going to say like two years ago, everybody was talking about acquisitions because it was happening all the time. It really did feel like every week there was three or four more of them. Well, I think that word now needs to be hijacked and it now needs to be partnerships because yeah. I see these partnerships every single week now. There really are loads mm -hmm. of them. And, and obviously people have, you know, rather than sell what they've got and then go and try and find something new to do, mm -hmm. they're just finding people who've got a real nice fit. So in this case, Cadence and um, shortcut, but I was talking to uh, Main WP, Dennis Dornan, the other week, and he was talking about all these different partnerships, SEO, Press, for example, and Atarim, just like perfect little symbiotic relationships where they both promote each other's stuff, and it works mm -hmm. out works out really well. Uh, hi, a, Courtney. A, Sorry. What a great sign of a healthy ecosystem around yeah. WordPress, though, right? Yeah, That all yeah, these is. things are happening. Yeah, it was quite interesting. In fact, <laughs> I'm going to plug my Tavern podcast again. The episode with Dennis Dornan was exactly about that. It was about why it's a good idea to create partnerships. And and in some scenarios, it just doesn't make sense you not partnering because there's absolutely no conflict in in the in the user base. It's not like, you know, if we talk about this other WordPress plugin, they're going to cannibalize our sales. The only thing that can happen is we're going to introduce you to new customers because in this case, Shortcut Cadence, there's no there's no overlap in that sense, but it just makes perfect sense to match things mm -hmm. up. SEO Press and um, Atarim and Main WP just makes, yeah, makes really perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So the next question for Katie then, <laughs> then is, do you collaborate with people in this way? Have you got partnerships that you're either working on or have worked on in the past? <laughs> Yeah, all the time and more and more so. Um, at the lowest level, it might just be a guest post swap or something like that. But I try to do it in a more involved way where we really think about how to um, appeal to each other's customers through talking about how our products work well together to add functionality. Um, and um, even people that could be viewed as um, competitors like uh, Iconic, for example, um, we work very closely together. We try not to overlap, but there is overlap. But where there isn't overlap, we try to promote each other's products and hopefully grow together. And then it's um, always good when, as you say, with Cadence and Shortcut, where there isn't any overlap, so you can just um, go all in and um, work together to, um, as I said, grow together. 
I think the integration piece for me is the holy grail of it because if it, it you know if it if the relationship is guest posting well that's brilliant because you know we all get to know what you're doing but for me as a purchaser of plugins it I'm always really chuffed when I just get a free new integration with a service that I've never heard of and without a shadow of a doubt it's it's going to get me investigating what that other thing is because I've already invested in this one thing over here. I'm at least going to explore it. So in this case, if I was you know a Cadence user and I suddenly hear about Shortcut and there's this new free thing that I can do, hmm, that's going to pique my interest. So yeah. Oh, and look, Dennis. Do <laughs> oh, hi, Dennis. Uh, so there's Dennis from Main WP, and he's uh, saying thank you for the mention. That's you're very welcome. Uh, joining us also is Courtney from uh, hey, Courtney. GoDaddy. Very nice to have you, Courtney. It says on here, and I don't really understand. I've never seen this on the UI for the plug for the restream thing that we're doing. It's got you marked down as paired. And you're the only one in the comments that I've ever seen with the word paired next to it. Yeah. And I have no idea what that means. So I'm sorry if I've done something wrong or you've, I don't know what's gone on there, but uh, paired, we, we are paired. We're, uh, we're having a collaboration. And also happy Monday uh, from Maya. Hi there, Maya. How are you doing from hey, GoDaddy as well? Okay, let's move on. This is a... This is something which I'm going to be... I really would like to make sure I'm going to get to this. This is WordCamp Europe. Last time in Porto, Portugal. This time coming up, it's going to be in Athens. I've never been to Athens. I've always wanted to go to Athens. There's something very appealing about going to Athens. But I bought a ticket, even though I haven't got accommodation or anything like that. So this is just it, really, just to say that the tickets are now available. Um, I think I paid 49 euros. Mm, yeah. or was it 49? Something like that, or 50? Um, I think it's 50. 50. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, there you go. Look, 50 euros for a ticket. And I think more or less at the minute, the euro and the dollar are fairly on par. So, you know, broadly speaking, it's 50, 50 bucks. It's the normal thing. It gets you entry to the event. Um, you can also agree to attend the, um, the Contributor Day. Although I've forgotten whether that's in front of or behind the main event. They also ask for, you know, the usual things like, do you want your avatar going on the page? And what's your, uh, what's your dietary requirements and things like your that? Your t-shirt so, size. Yeah, t-shirt size. Yeah, that's right. Wow, there was a lot of t-shirt sizes. <laughs> it's like a full page. of That's good. Different. Yeah. We're inclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool. And um, so that's it, Coffee really. Speakers are still open, though, right now. Yes, yes. That's a good point. So uh, Only for like another week or two, I think. So yeah, if you're interested in speaking, going, get it in there. Yeah, the page that I'm looking at is purely about buying the tickets. But yes, mm -hmm. I think you're right, Michelle. If you look over here. Get involved, call for speakers, call for sponsors, and obviously the call for volunteers. It is what it is. If you want to go to WordCamp Europe, you're going to have to go here. My understanding is it always seems, I don't know if it's like fake scarcity a little bit, but it often seems like they run out very quickly. But I think it's they run out of tranches. They have like, I don't know what it is, 500 and they run out. And then a few days later, they put a few more on. But honestly, I think if you are even thinking of going, get in early because it typically does sell out so i guess the next mm -hmm. question to you is who's who's going who's going who wants to go I, I i both applied to speak and bought a ticket so i've got my bases covered ah now nice. yes of course if you get a speaker slot you get a ticket right you'll be able to mm -hmm. you'll be able to do something with that ticket but yes. you don't know if you're going yet you're going to wait on the speaker slot thing oh no i bought a ticket too just in case i will plan to be there have you done and all the I air do... travel bit and everything yet not yet. That's coming. I actually am waiting for my passport. And once I get my passport, I can secure travel. Okay. Yeah. Katie? Um, yeah, we're going to sponsor. We've never sponsored before. They're the small business one. See, the smallest one that gets a table, basically. So currently learning about swag and trying to decide what to do and all of that. Um, I got a bit excited and bought more tickets than I have team members because of <laughs> they got better. Um, yeah. Well, scarcity. Well, after WordCamp US sold out in an hour and five minutes last time, mm -hmm. and Asia, I didn't. I was going to go with six team members, and none of us got tickets. So I think the other word camps have created that impression of scarcity for Europe, which obviously has a much greater capacity. So maybe Europe's okay because tickets have been on sale for like four days now, and they haven't sold out. So. Yes. 
and it's yes. only the first batch as well. But yeah, I still think get in there because people have missed out on work camps um, in the last year. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I think I'll probably bring at least uh, there'll be at least six of us. Um, nice, there. and you're gonna have you're gonna have one of the booths at WordCamp Europe. They the ones that you're talking about, you know, they're like I don't know, they're like a meter and a half, two meters wide or something like that. You get your logo mm. in big in a big banner above your head and the logo, you know, draping off the table. And honestly, it was really busy. Mm. It, it, the, the I don't know what it'll be like in Athens, but the location of the sponsor booths in WordCamp Europe, they surrounded the the main speaking auditorium, so you really couldn't get access to the main area without bypassing at some point the sponsors and it, i think it worked really well there were there was a lot of engagement there were pe there were people stood by almost every booth at one point and so i feel it's a really good um a really good investment for somebody like you to go and put your face out there and all of that kind of stuff that's yeah great yeah i was okay. talking to mark from ws form who did the sport the small business sponsor yeah. last year and he said he said he directly measured a good roi from it which i wouldn't expect because i would see the main benefits as the indirect benefits like becoming better known as a brand the relationships you build the partnerships um, but he said he actually did a sale and generated lots of sales which really surprised me he had a he had a really nice um his product is really easy to figure out by looking at it isn't it you know yeah. you can you can see the form builder and get a real impression of oh okay that's how ws form were and he had a video and i actually asked him i said did you get that professionally done he said no i did it myself like all things mark does but it really showed everything you know how complex the plugin could be so, so that was another thing there was a great big telly behind his head as well mm. so sorry katie i've I'm probably going to now force you to go and make some kind of promotional no, video. No, we do that. Well. I do have a full-time video person now who's <laughs> new, so we're okay there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I think definitely worth it. Um, so this piece was all about getting a ticket. Um, they're on sale at the moment. The The URL is europe.wordcamp.org forward slash 2023. And from there, you can go and find out about the tickets. Rob, you going? I have a ticket at this point, but it might be my vacation week. So if the lady in my life rules the iron hand, I'm not going. <laughs> so uh, I might be have I might be having a giveaway for one more camp your ticket. <laughs> no, well, well, fingers crossed. Let's hope you go, and and I shall be endeavouring to go. But again, I I haven't really put. I haven't put it against the calendar of what the rest of the members of the family are doing yet. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, okay. So some news about collaboration again, we were just talking about it a minute ago. This seems to be, an, like I said, an interesting and growing trend. This is, so this isn't an acquisition. So it's more of a kind of, I don't really know what the, the, the term is for this, but uh, here we go. Lift at LMS strengthens leadership with investment from Paid Memberships Pro. So Paid Memberships Pro is a very long-standing uh, membership solution. Um, you can see on the screen the founders. You've got uh, Jason and Kim Coleman. We've had Kim on this podcast, actually, in the past, doing this show. And they've decided to invest in Lifter LMS. The article is on the Lifter LMS blog. You can go and find it there. And as you might imagine, because it's not an acquisition, it's not a takeover, it's really an exchange of finances, but also experience. Um, I'm pretty sure that Kim and Jason, I don't know if they get a seat on the board or something like that. I, for some reason, my memory's blanking. I read this entire article and now I can't really remember. It's but, right um, there above their pictures. That, that what does paragraph. it say? What does it say? What does it say? They'll be taking you know? active roles in the company to apply their engineering, design and business skills to Lifter. Thank you very much. Their expertise mm -hmm. and experience will be invaluable as we work towards our mission to democratize learning in the digital classroom. Okay, so for their investment, they do sort of seem to have a bit of skin in the game now as well. I mean, there's such a big overlap there, isn't there? An LMS platform mm -hmm. and a membership platform there. I would imagine in many ways they kind of overlap. So yeah, again, another example of WordPress businesses working together. Good luck. Hope it works out. Jason, um and Kim and also uh Chris Badger, who I know from Lifter LMS. I'm sure there's some other people behind Lifter LMS as well, but I, I only really know uh Chris Badger. So yeah, any comments on that? Um yeah, so it also mentions um in the article um that uh, Thomas has uh, who was the um CTO, I think, before oh, right. of Lifter has moved on 
So um, my understanding is they're basically taking over his role, particularly with the technical side. And I believe Jason is doing something like a day a week at Lifter. So he is actively contributing and they're looking for ways they can get closer and closer over time. That's a big deal, though, isn't it? If you go from if you go to doing one fifth of, of your working week on something which, you know, a little while ago, you didn't really have any uh, relationship with. That's quite a big change. They really are deadly serious about that. Ah, interesting. Um, Michelle, Rob, should we move on? I'm excited for all of them. I can't wait mm. to see what happens. Um, in, in other news, uh, paired, we still have no idea what paired means. Uh, Courtney says, I have no idea. Perhaps she's logged into YouTube and other platforms of restream audio. I don't know. Um, but she does say loads, loves the small business represented at WordCamp EU. Yeah. Just going back to that story, actually, Katie, um, did you go to did you go to WordCamp EU? Were you there at that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll know what I meant about that, like arrangement of booths. Yeah, because it room. was like a circle around, yeah. and you had to go through it to get to the main sponsor hall or yeah. the, where the talks were. Yeah, but I do, I do think Courtney makes a really good point. You know, it's just nice to be in an environment where you are with so many other people who are going through the same sort of struggles and you know things that you're going through all in the one space. Yeah, it's really nice. And do, 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 entice the folks to hang out with your booth, she says. Interactive games to win prizes is usually a hit. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Uh, Elementor last time, they had this great big, I mean, it's, I don't know how good it is for the environment, but they had this great big uh, vat full of like little squishy balls and you had to dip your hand in. And if you, if you, if you bought a ball out with nothing written on it, apart from the Elementor logo, you got a squishy ball. But if you had something else, then uh, you won whatever it said. And I, <laughs> oh, I put my hand in and uh, I won a squishy ball. And then the next person just behind me, she pulled it out and got an iPad Pro. I was oh, gutted. wow. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's like being at Las Vegas where you vacate mm. the chair and then somebody comes along and pulls the one arm bandit and wins the million dollars. That's what it felt like. <laughs> I it, hope was, it was, it was really ridiculous. Good squishy ball. <laughs> yeah, it was a very valuable squishy ball. Okay, so yes, good luck. Uh, good luck to both companies and all involved. I hope mm -hmm. that works out. Seems like a real nice bit of synergy. Okay, Mika Epstein is after what can only be described as a very unusual request this week. Uh, she wants intentionally wrong plugins. <laughs> She's on the lookout for people who've got plugins which basically break, um, well, all sorts of things. She wants things that are broken but intentionally broken. So she really is after developers to go out there and build something which does something it shouldn't do. Um, and this, I think, is more to do about onboarding in the future. I think there's a concern that, that when you put your plugin into the repo and want to get it evaluated for whether or not it's suitable and uh, fit for purpose, there's not much guidance in the way of, well, what means it's not fit for purpose? So they're mm. going to look at a whole load of deliberately broken ones and identify what the what they look like. So she wants, she, she wants these. She, by wrong, <laughs> she means plugins that don't sanitize or escape. So that's code. Um, short code's not checking for validity security. Again, that's a bit of code. SQLs prepare. Um, so the function SQL prepare issues. Using scripts instead of WP underscore in Q. Using curl gets a bit technical here, so I won't read that one out. But the final one has got nothing to do with code. Trademarks uh, infringement. So, for example, starting off your plugin with, in this case, she's mentioned the name Microsoft. You know, you've got something which collaborates in some way with a Microsoft thing, Microsoft Teams or something, those kind of things. She said the list is incomplete, but what she wants is just a ton of things which are deliberately broken. And I've never seen that before, so I thought that was just quite... It's Quite it's like you want to secret shop your people, right? Like, yeah. let's see if they find yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. mistake it's, here. <laughs> it almost sounds like you've got to go out and deliberately write this as well, or at least get your plugin and then deliberately do something wrong. So I don't know if it's a process of whether or not you will tell them what you think is wrong with it, or whether it's for the team to figure out, like, okay, we're going to sleuth out and figure out what it's wrong so that our process for detecting wrongness uh, can be can become better. Anyway, there you go. It's on make.wordpress.org and it's called Looking for Your Intentionally Wrong Plugins. 
it it does it does kind of remind me of when like the police say you know trade trade like we they offer you a free television if you come to the station and then like the person that they offered it to is actually has a warrant out for their arrest <laughs> I was once right, total aside, and I don't know if this is legit, but it's a story which is still in my head. I was once in Washington State, right, driving a car which I'd, I'd bought, and and I got pulled over by a policeman who said, you have to pay me $50 in cash, otherwise I'm going to take you to the station. And I was like, I was a bit suspicious, thinking, hang on. Why? Why has it got to be cash? What well, you know? Okay, so and he, and he ended up paying him fifty dollars in cash, thinking, oh, you know what? If I don't pay, I'm just gonna. And then drove away, and I just thought, this is a racket. He's just made it up. Yeah, corruption. <laughs> That's terrible. That was my experience with the Washington. You know, you know what that reminds me of is, uh, and Michelle will equate to this being in North America as the old boss hog on the Dukes of Hazzard. Eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember that show. That show was huge in the UK mm-hmm. as well. That was the two guys whose door didn't work, right? And they had to throw themselves in through the window. Yeah, very, very mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, I just remember sitting there thinking, I, I have no power here. Even if I'm right, I'm wrong. There's nothing yeah. that I can do. Anyway, sorry, this is supposed to be about WordPress. <laughs> okay. We are droning on about the police. Uh, okay, very important. <laughs> bit of security news coming your way on the GiveWP plugin side of things. Got an email this week from the GiveWP team. The long and the short of it is you've got to update your plugin because there is a what they've termed critical vulnerability. Michelle, being very connected with this, do you know, do you know more? I, I have not heard that anybody actually experienced any issues with something that was discovered and patched before um, I heard of any, I have not heard of any um, actual attacks uh, through that vulnerability, which is always a good thing. So it's good to find those and squash those bugs before um, anything malicious does happen, but go ahead and make sure that you've updated your give WP so that you aren't vulnerable any longer. Yeah. So give WP 2.23.2 contained a an unauthorized SQL injection, which was considered critical. Don't know what the, I mean, we obviously know what critical means, but in this case, I, I presume it means it could be exploited right away. Um, you know, there's probably not a great deal of complexity there, but it was an immediate thing. So it was patched immediately, and now we're on to 2.24.0. Perhaps we've bypassed that already by now, I don't know. But please make sure you've moved away from the 2.23.2 version. These kind of things happen uh, all the time, but it's very nice when you see a plugin manufacturer actually email out into their list and say, get on with it. So, you know, rather Mm -hmm. than hiding behind it and just using the regular update cycle. Unlike LastPass, (coughs) cough. Yeah who, uh, you know, seem to have just ignored the whole problem. Anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Nathan, yeah. you mean you mean LastPass, uh, PayPal, and T-Mobile right behind it? Like, oh, I don't know about the PayPal and the, T-Mobile so, things. Is that bad as well? Oh, no. Yeah, they're, ba- they're bad as well. So what, what I'll tell you is I give, give WP a lot of credit for being transparent and taking care of the yeah. users, being in this security space a little bit. And I think I've kind of dubbed this year the year of the vulnerability. I hate to say it. I think we're get, we're in for a rough year because the disclosure laws have all changed in the UK, changed in Europe, changed in Canada, changed in the US. So companies are coming forward more and more. So I think we just got to get used to it. And I think the key companies we want to work with are the ones that say, hey, we got a problem. We fixed it and let's move on. I think that's the important thing. So, yeah, I really don't think anybody who's got any technology in their lives has any misunderstanding that technology is perfect. The only imperfect bit, I think, really is when the, the, the company just sit under a, you know, pretend like it never happened. And so, this is it's quite nice to see when somebody deals with it responsibly um, and produces a piece straight away, informing all their users. Yeah. Let's hope, as Michelle said, nothing actually uh, untoward happened. iThemes and WordFence and PatchStack, they every week, uh, at least every couple of weeks, you know, different for each of those publications, they create a laundry list of plugin vulnerabilities Mm -hmm. that have been discovered. So it is quite a good idea. I subscribe to all of them. And they're usually in like a 
bullet pointed list with icons of what the plugin is. And you're probably familiar with the icons. So I just tend to sort of scroll through them each week and typically, you know, doesn't affect me, but it's quite nice to quite nice to subscribe to those. So that's iTheme Security, that's WordFence and Patchstack. They're the ones that I know of that produce that. But then I think there's some other databases out there as well. Okay. Right. All right, next one. Right, Katie, you're up. This is all about WooCommerce for the next little bit. <laughs> you probably know more about WooCommerce than any of us. So three three news pieces, all on the tavern, but coincidentally, all about WooCommerce, all happening in this week. So first one is WooCommerce 7.3. I think this is the most interesting one for me, at least, anyway. WooCommerce 7.3 introduces a new block. It's a beta block, um, and it's the new product block. Um, essentially, you get the option to drop in the product block and do all sorts of configurations as you're now familiar in the right hand side editor. You know, you can change the way it looks and you can change the different queries and so on. I think if I'm, no, I'm confusing two of the stories. So this is kind of nice. There's also some patterns which they've thrown in, but I couldn't quite understand what the purpose of that was. But Katie, I have to ask do things like this coming into WooCommerce, do they compete? With you, or do they complement what you do at Barn 2? Um, kind of, uh, I'll go with option three, which is they, okay. um, <laughs> they give us opportunities to integrate with it. So, for example, our WooCommerce Quick View plugin doesn't compete particularly, uh, I suppose it complements, um, but it would add a Quick View button next to the Add to Cart button within the block. So we would then need to test with that and integrate it and make sure it works. We have a product filter plugin, which would add filters either above the new block or to the side, and that'll probably require some custom integration as well to make it work. Um, so I'm hoping that the new block will have the required filters for us to do that because the current ones didn't. And it always feels really sad for the customers and unprofessional to have to document this doesn't work fully because the filter doesn't exist in the current WooCommerce blocks, which is literally what we've had to do so far. So I'm hoping that the net new one will move it on a step and allow us to get in there and make the filters work properly with it. Um, always nice, though, to get options like this for complete novices. You know, if I'm coming mm. to WooCommerce, I think it's fair to say that in the past it was a real jigsaw piece of trying, sorry, jigsaw puzzle of trying to hook things together and make your store work. Unless you wanted something like truly out of the box basic, you know, the basic cart with the basic layout and all of the stuff that you get. All of this stuff that's now coming into blocks is really interesting. You know, you, what's showing on the screen is um, it's a three it's a three column grid. You've got some criteria in the right. So, for example, you can you can add in different filters, like whether it's you know only show things which are in stock. You can also show things which are out of stock, and so on and so forth. Various different options, like the number of um, number of columns that you can use, and so on. So it's really great. It allows completely inexperienced users. And I've got to say, for WooCommerce, I'm not experienced at all. Something like this would really allow me to you know get into the weeds and start mucking about. Oh. No, I am right. It is based upon the query loop block, which if you've ever used it before, really does allow you to sort of drill deep into the WordPress database and sock stuff out to show on the screen. So yeah, very cool. Um, I'll move on to the next one, if that's all right. And this one is dead simple. Again, it's on the WP Tavern. It does one thing, it does one thing. It's uh, WooCommerce Blocks 9.4 adds support for local pickup, exactly as you might expect. In this day and age, it seems like you know everybody's getting everything delivered to home, but maybe, a bit like me, you quite like the option to be able to go and pick it up from a local depot. In my case, there's a little drop-off box. Um, it's about 300 meters from my home, and because the weather is so rubbish here, in the UK, and I'm often not in the house for hours at a time. You know, Amazon parcel arrives, I get home, it's soaking wet, it was a book, it's completely <laughs> ruined. I'm now more and more choosing these local pickup options, and it's great. I walk there, punch in a code, out it comes. It's really, really great. And now you can do this with that block. Again, Katie, anything to throw in there? or? Um, well, WooCommerce has always had a local pickup payment gateway in the settings, but I suppose what this is doing is making right. it easier with regards to blocks and things like that. 
Um, and I like I don't think you could enter in the front end and address. I think local pickup until now meant that you had to collect it from the location of the vendor. Um, so it's moving it on a bit. Yeah. Yeah, because there's an option. You can see it in the UI um, mm. pickup options. You've got the option of wait. It look, I don't know if you can add in various different options. I'm not quite sure how this UI works, but what it's showing us in the screenshot is an option for New York as well as an option for Los Angeles. Yeah, I may have been misunderstanding the the nature of that, but perhaps it's not the ability to send it to sort of local drop-off areas. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I think you're right. And that's a really good use case for it because that's such a need now. And the fact that you can enter address suggests that, that is what it is, unlike the local pickup in traditional WooCommerce. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of lucky in that I've got a front door, which is on my own land, if you like. So my front door is my front door. And really, you have to be breaking the law to to take that parcel but if i was to live in i don't know a flat or something where you've just got you know a collection of letter boxes in the foyer or something having the option to drop it off somewhere else is yeah really nice the typical thing that happens in the uk is if you're not in they write you a little tiny postcard note in illegible handwriting that you haven't a clue what it says and it usually says come to the depot in like you know in the next two or three days and pick it up so I think those and that's are such nice. a nightmare for people who um, work in an office away from their home. And us WordPress types have that luxury of actually being at home a lot during the yeah. day. But yeah. Um, yeah. people with nine to five jobs away from home, this is a real issue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay, so that's in, that's another new block. And then the final WooCommerce story directly um, is all about performance on the WooCommerce side. So the new WooCommerce cart and checkout blocks, it's all the blocks today, isn't it? Um, it seems to be lacking in performance and there is a, a growing desire for it to be more performant. So I guess this article is really raising that as an issue and hoping that people will rally around and test. There's a little table here which kind of spells it out really nicely. Um, if you use short codes in the past for WooCommerce, you can see that the total payload uh, was under a under a megabyte. It was 935 kilobytes, whereas the, the new block option adds an extra two megabytes. It's 2.9 megabytes. Um, and you can see the statistics on there. The, the number of requests made on the page load has more or less doubled. It's gone from 77 to a, 144. Um, a few people quoted in the article saying, yeah, the payload of the JavaScript that's brought along is all uh, bigger. So at the moment, probably I would imagine people, if they're into SEO, want their site to be quick, will steer away from that. But yeah, go and read the article and get that checked out. Again, I'm throwing it at you, Katie, being the WooCommerce expert. Oh, I wasn't aware of this issue, and it's good that that's been raised. But my main comment is, in that table you just showed, I love the way they've added Shopify for um, to benchmark it. That Yeah, sure, the blocks are slower, but just look at Shopify. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting because I wasn't sure what that meant, actually, because it says here... Um, it's showing the legacy code checkout with blocks checkout and Shopify. So I was wondering if it was a combination of this short code as well as Shopify, or if it was just sort of standalone Shopify. It must and be I, standalone because Shopify is a separate host. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so I was a bit confused saying, by all of that. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. Either okay, so it's whatever it is, it's not that bad. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah Shopify being the second biggest e-commerce uh, platform, I believe, after WooCommerce. So yeah. Interesting. At the bottom of this Political article choice. is an article uh, which you can click on, which is a discussion of how these kind of things might be. Approved. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. Right, let's move on. Unless, I apologise, I didn't bring either Rob or Michelle into either of the, uh, any of those three. Did you want to comment? I apologise for not asking. I'm good. I'm good too. I, I just think it's all good for the Woo ecosystem. So yep. I, yep. that's yep. all I am. Yeah, very nice. Okay, right. So I'm going to move away from WordPress for now for a bit. It may be that we drop back into WordPress depending on the other stuff that's coming up. I think we do. Um, but just to say, one of the websites which I use probably as much as almost anything else, you know, if I type in a fact, for example, to Google, more or less every time it's the Wikipedia article which rises to the top. But whenever I go to Wikipedia, I'm always got, I've always got that feeling of like, wow, we're still in 2007 or something like that. <laughs> Haven't changed their design for ages. They're about to do it. So one of the biggest properties on the internet making a big change. Well, not really a big change. It looks pretty minor, to be honest. But you know, then again, with a heavy text-based 
institution like this, I guess you can't really do much else. But um, it says it's the first major desktop update in over uh, 10 years. It's 22 years, 22 years old. That's wow. cool. You know, Michelle, earlier you were talking about how the Openverse, the image Openverse, is like a great, a great example of how the internet can be cool. I think Wikipedia mm -hmm. is is almost the best example online mm -hmm. of how humanity can do things right. Um, just the idea that almost everybody can go in and edit, and it's miraculous. It's, it's just miraculous. It's, it's not full of junk. <laughs> It's crowd. I've been mean, talking about crowdsourcing at its at its finest, right? I mean, we crowdsource so many things. We and crowdsourcing really became like a, a term around things like fundraising. But this is absolutely crowdsourced information. And I mean, I've created pages on here. I'm sure others have, and tweak them and update them. And I don't spend a ton of time in there, but I use it for all kinds of information. Yeah, it. it I'm a, the same. I'm a consumer, so really, I'm I'm kind of stealing yeah. everybody's goodwill. But um, I use it quite a lot just to research things, you know. And I've, I've got kids, and they're often trying to do homework. Mm -hmm. And like I say, Google will typically throw one of these articles back at you. But I'm always amazed by how uh, how incredibly well what's what's it called? Cit citation. How the citations are there. It's obviously thoughtful people writing thoughtful articles and yeah, pretty amazing. But the ability to change it, I once went in and changed something because I found an error. And uh and it was quite it was quite interesting coming in and seeing how that little process worked. You know, there's like a pyramid Absolutely. of people above you who get mm -hmm. to check all of that. But I remember when I was a kid, there was always this like once a year we'd get this knock on the door and it'd be a guy coming around trying to sell encyclopedias. And so back in the day, that was if you wanted to find something out, that was the way to do it, right? You either went to your local yep. library, which took ages, and looked mm -hmm. at their row of encyclopedias, or you had your own set of encyclopedias. It was like the mark of being. It was almost like mm -hmm. the, I don't know, the status symbol. Oh, I've got the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> then it was always followed. Which letters have you got? Well, I've got P and D at the minute. I'm still trying. <laughs> Still yeah. trying to build it up. But my now... father, my father bought an entire encyclopedia set when I was born, yep. as though 1968 was the year that time stopped. That's right. <laughs> yeah. nothing, nothing would ever be the be really added to history. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and here we are with Wikipedia, 22 years old, an amazing thing. Every year, just before Christmas, they offer they offer the ability to um for you to donate money to help. Yeah. Their cause. Please, please do. Yeah, please, please take some time if you use it and donate some money. They, they offer uh, a valuable service. Michelle, yeah. just add to your father saying time stopped in 1968. I remember my dad buying encyclopedias and there was a, they had the reoccurring revenue model. They put out an annual every year, just update it. Mm -hmm. So there you go. <laughs> yep. we're, we're all dating ourselves on this call. Yeah, yeah well, I think probably... <laughs> Probably Katie's the youngest of us all. Um, of the, <laughs> the, yeah, so anyway, a big thing like that, you can't really go changing it all that dramatically. Yeah. So the change isn't that dramatic, but it somehow just looks a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. Yeah. So hopefully that'll, that'll roll out. I confess I haven't checked, but I just thought that was a That's nice little cool. story. That's cool. Um, this is one just very much worth mentioning. If, if you uh, use forms a lot and you have the, ability to style them so that they look in line with everything this is just a great little article that i found this week it's on the austingill.com website and it's called um how to style html forms right or sorry how to build html forms right styling it's a five-part series where it's cool this just a total forms nerd it would seem who's decided to mm -hmm. devote masses of his life to helping everybody make nice forms. The first section is all about semantics, then accessibility, very important. This is the third in the the five. This is all about styling it. Then user experience and security, the other parts. And then it just goes into so much depth about how you can make your form look great. And I just wanted to drop this into the show notes. This, this is this was constantly one of my bugbears as a, when I was building websites more than I do now, was trying to make them look nice. And here you go. This article will tell you how to do all that. Very nice. Thank you, Austin. That's awesome. Yeah, isn't it? Thanks. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Nice, nice people out there on the internet. 
Uh, I think I'll miss that one for the moment. Oh, shall I? No, okay. So no. this is the. Uh, it's a good one, right? This is uh, mm. this is an article. I don't know who it's by, but the website is called Editor X. I think is is Editor X like a page builder? Is it like a is it like a Squarespacey type of thing? I, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's like a publication that just publishes ideas like a blog. Don't know. Anyway, they've got a, an article entitled, well, <laughs> how many of these do you get every year? But this one I quite liked. It's called The Big Ideas That Will Change Web Design in 2023. And obviously they're crystal ball gazing. Um, <laughs> but I like it. There was a few things in here which I thought was nice. Uh, first one, what do we reckon about this, right? Do you think that in 2023, it's going to be okay to use unconventional navigation. Will you be doing any of that? I'll show you a couple of examples that they quote as being really nice. And I've got to say, I kind of like them. So imagine imagine this on like an iPad or something. So there you are. You've got the page. Unfortunately, my little logo, my name is in the way, so you can't quite see it. But right at the bottom, right in the middle, is like a little brown dot. And if you hover over it, the word menu just kind of gently appears. It's beautifully done. And if you click on that, how about that? What do you I I think that's really great. If I was using my finger on this, this to me seems like a far superior UI for doing menus than anything I've used before. So you swipe left, you swipe right, you've got a little thumbnail of what the page is like, and then you tap the finger again whole website goes away. What do you make of that? Is that is that cool? I love it when it's open. I love the visual side of it, that you can see the pages that entices you to click on them. I hate that it's at the bottom for two reasons. <gasps> One, because it's not convention. How would anybody know to find it there? Um, maybe somebody massive like Apple could get away with that, but I think small websites can't be reinventing the wheel because it's not what their users expect and they'll just be frustrated. But if you put something like that in the middle at the top or maybe on the left at the top, then people would find it. And then I like how it is when it's open. I'm just going to see what it looks like when we're on a on a like a mobile interface. So when when you're on the mobile interface, you've got you can see it on the screen now. You've got the little brown dot at the bottom but it only says menu seemingly when you interact with it. So, yeah, that's a bit of a no-no, isn't it? How would anybody know to interact with it? Yeah, you're I right. I was recently hiring for a designer role, and I rejected a few people because they had websites with really innovative navigation that I felt was completely inaccessible because of the learning curve related mm -hmm. to working out how the hell to navigate it. And I thought, yeah. I don't want someone like that in my company because I want my users to instinctively know where to go. So even if they're a good designer, I actually rejected those applications. Ah, oh, that's really interesting. What does um, a screen reader do with that too? I mean, talk about yeah. accessibility, Katie. Like mm. it's it's it seems inaccessible and we can see it. Can you imagine what a screen reader would try to do with this? Yeah, good point. Actually, do you know what? I think I'm gonna bookmark this one to use with Peacher next time we do our little UI oh, UX show because she always brings out the UI tools, things like Wave, mm -hmm. but that's usually for contrast. But we could we could look into that. Yeah, I think the I think what they were trying to say was not that not that this is going to become the normal, but this is a bit like your trendy magazine. There's going to be a few people pushing the boundaries, but I think their their stipulation is there's going to be a few more people pushing the boundaries. Interestingly, if that had an icon in it, so I'm looking at the little blue dot at the bottom. If that had an icon in it, which was your little three three hamburgers, you know the one that's like typically now mm -hmm. associated with mobile menus. I I actually prefer it at the bottom because okay caveat on a phone because my thumb is at the bottom and I get really infuriated that essentially my phone ought to be largely a one-handed device but it's not it's always a two-handed device and one hand is just consumed by holding the thing so that the other thing's free to interact and if the if the navigation dwelled at the bottom and I could with my thumb sort of go left and right there I'm feeling there is a bit of a place for that. And I notice if you have an Android phone, I don't know if any of you do, but if you have an Android phone, more or less everything now has got a little dot menu at the bottom. And usually it's like an ad 
It's like a, you know, add a contact, uh, start an email or something like that. But mm-hmm. increasingly, the little menu at the bottom, when you click on it, more menus sort of collapse upwards out of it and it's just become the normal way that I interact. So now I'm I'm kind of hankering for navigation at the bottom of the page so that I can use my phone one handed whilst driving. Not whilst driving. <laughs> definitely not definitely well, not doing well scrolling driving. on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you know what I mean? I've got other things to do with the other hand. I need the other phone in the other hand, you know, trying to do t- <laughs> I don't know how we've all become so lazy, but that's the thing. I really like the anyway, I thought that was really nice. Let me show you another one, uh, which I thought was nice. This one is an example of how it's very similar, right? I've decided to show it on a mobile because it just works better. Um, so the menu is contained in the normal, more or less normal menu item at the top. So you've got menu, logo, what have you. If you click on the menu, what do you reckon? I, to me, that feels like native iOS. That feels like I'm actually on an iPhone and they're kind of trying to mimic what the iPhone would do to me. You can then sort of scroll with it and you get these other bits and pieces at the bottom and if you click on those and click the menu again, there's options at the bottom. And it, I can't find a particular example of it. But again, it scrolls up from the bottom a bit like you would have with your notification pane on the iPhone. You know, when you scroll it up and you can do the volume and the brightness of the screen and all that kind of stuff. It does the same kind of thing. So anyway, I just thought they were kind of nice little examples. What do you reckon? Funky funky menus on the uh, on the way out. It's not the kind of thing I'd be getting involved with. I think I'm a bit more like Katie. I just want something solid and reliable. But it does kind of feel that that hamburger menu top right, I, I don't know, maybe we just need to move on just because we need to move on for no reason <laughs> other than that. Well, that's an excellent analogy that you mentioned the hamburger menu because for years, loads of people didn't know what that was, particularly people that maybe aren't so computer savvy. And they were like, where's the menu? Where's the menu? And, and uh, often the younger generation would find, would like, there it is, it's those lines. And that that's a really good example of intuitively bad usability, actually, whereas the example that you just showed, Nathan, showed the word menu. Well, unless you're a restaurant, which is another issue, yeah, um, yeah, websites, yeah. Um, that is clear. Uh, so, but people have come to accept the hamburger, but actually intrinsically, I think it's a bad usability um, element. Well, the website goes on to talk about a lot more. It talks about the fact that they think that, and we won't get into the thick of it all, but I just, it's a nice article. I'll, I'll drop the link in the show notes. They think there'll be a rise in unconventional navigation menus. And I, I would welcome that actually, to be honest. Uh, And we'll go on to this one, which is AI becomes another tool in the toolbox. Okay, we have this conversation fairly frequently, but I know Katie's got some opinions on this one because Katie dropped another link in the show notes, which you can find on the Smart Company website. Um, And uh, really, I, I don't use this phrase very much, but I have to use it now. Unless you have been living under an actual rock, you will know that people have started to use AI in all sorts of fun ways, you know, creating images and creating text. Uh, This article, I had to read it really very quickly because Katie sent it through and I didn't see it until the last moment. Basically, Katie, it felt to me like the, the, the thrust of this article was if everybody uses AI and we're all using the same AI, everything's just going to sound the same. And so your business isn't really going to sound different or authentic it's just going to sound like well they used ai that's really lazy is that really what what it was saying essentially yeah and it uses the example of wordpress themes that have created quite a standardized look across many of the world's websites now you can i mean wordpress you can do anything in wordpress obviously and yet there are many websites you know at a glance that's a wordpress theme don't you so they're using that as an analogy for the impact of ai on the copy side of things so the two together they're saying are going to make the internet a really boring place yeah, I would I would agree, Katie. Um, one of the biggest things in business is to differentiate your business from your competitors. And if we all keep using AI, it'll be the same. There's um, a really good book out there uh, called The Inside Advantage. It was written in 29, and it talks about why business owners have to make their business 
different than their competitors to exceed. And I so strongly agree with that because then we're all fighting everything on price and then we know where that goes, right? So we we don't want to do that. So so well said. I um I have this feeling that we're in this kind of incubation period with it where we all think it's just dead cool because it's dead cool. Because at no point have you been able to go to a website and say, I don't know, write me a piece about Justin Bieber. I mean, for God's sake, why would I want to do that anyway? But you get the point. Um, And it would just splurge out an article about Justin Bieber. I actually put it to the test this week. I I got ChatGPT and I asked it to, I posed it a question, but the intention of the question was basically give me a blog post of about 700 words, something like that. And was it great? Yes, it was. It it managed to make all sorts of interesting conclusions that I definitely would not have made. So it was a really good Kickstarter. But did it sound like an eight-year-old? Yes, it did. It sounded like somebody that was just given the task of write something really boring but incredibly accurate. Now, I know everybody's going to say it's going to change, it's going to change, it'll get good at like style and you'll be able to do it in the style of Justin Bieber, for example. Um, but I don't know. I'm just not convinced that the world needs this deluge of AI. I'm just becoming a bit of a Luddite, I think, in my old age. I'm going to get Michelle's opinion on this at this point. <laughs> I think it's a great tool, but I wouldn't rely on it Um you know, just because you have a hammer doesn't mean that everything is a nail kind of thing. And if you are using it for research and for idea generation, I think that's great. Right. So there's I can't always think of 10 reasons why I should X, Y, Z. But if I ask AI to tell me 10 reasons, it'll give me 10 reasons. And then I've got something to start from. I think it's great. I wrote, I wrote about this at Post Status, that it's a great way to get past a writer's block. If you have been assigned a topic that you need to write about. Um, would I post an entire article that was generated by AI? Absolutely not. It doesn't sound like me. It doesn't have my voice. It doesn't have the voice of, um, you know, of post status or of learn dash or whoever else I'm writing for at the time. Uh, but is it a good way for me to kind of jumpstart and get into things? Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I can see the benefits of it. I spent an hour with, um, with Andrew Palmer last Friday looking at Bertha AI and, it, it, you can even generate images in there right now. And he kept showing me like with the idea of rock climbing should have used Justin Bieber. That would have been more interesting. <laughs> but One of the images, like the guy's knee was bent the wrong direction. Like his leg bent the wrong direction at the knee. And I thought, well, he's been in a rock climbing accident apparently, but you know, so it just, it shows that it's a great tool, but you shouldn't use it as the end all don't fire your, your content staff at this point because you think you can get everything through AI. I think at the bottom of it, that is my concern is that it's going to, it's going to be so compelling for higher, um, higher level employees who are making the decisions about payroll. I think it's Mm. going to be such a compelling decision to lay off people. Those same people should then ask AI to do specific tasks and see how it fall. It fails on so many levels if you're relying on it solely without any human element. Well, a good example on ChatGPT3, at least anyway, is I think that I think it stopped scraping the internet in like 2020 or something. So, you know, it doesn't know anything about the last two and a bit years. So if you ask it, I don't know, a question about what is Justin Bieber's latest song? If he's had any songs since 2020, it simply doesn't know about them. So there is that. But my understanding also is factually it can it can literally drop you in it because it just gives mm-hmm. you the wrong fact. It tells you that something it, it is It wouldn't black know who the black. reigning sovereign of the UK is right now then. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's, it's an important matter. It should know the reigning sovereign of the UK. Ma- major historical events. Yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. Um, speaking of which, let me throw this in your path. This wasn't in the show notes, but I came across this week. This week. I've actually started to pay for search. Um, I've decided that I no longer wish to use Google and I'm going to try it out for a year and see what happens. It's called Neva, N-E-E-V-A, Neva.com. And um, guess where they all learned their trade, though? Uh, Google. But they've decided to set up this, what they're, they're claiming it's no tracking, no bias. They've been scraping the internet for five years. So it's not like they sort of launched the other week, which they did, 
but without any tracking, sorry, without any um, scraping of the internet. So really the only difference I can see in terms of the quality of the links that come back is that it's a tiny, teeny bit slower. So whereas Google, you hit return and it, it's boom, it's right there, right? And you forget how amazing that is. With Neva, it's maybe like you click the button and like, I don't know, a quarter of a second goes by and boom, it goes onto the screen. But it really, really works. It's really, really good. I like the way when you do a search, which because I'm not logged in on an incognito window, so I can't, it, it presents it in a slightly different configuration. There's just images in slightly different places and the thumbnails for images are slightly different. But also, so this is where the AI comes in. It will integrate with ChatGPT and give you a bespoke search back uh, at the top of the search results if you enable it. So, for example, if I asked uh, who, I don't know, if I just say who is Justin Bieber, it will throw the ChatGPT thing at me, which is kind of curious. And I do wonder, I do wonder if Google, and this is nothing to do with Neva, just in general, I do wonder if Google are sort of a bit frightened of things like chat gpt because i see so many people now going there to get answers to things whereas before you always went to google right if you wanted to know the answer to something you went to google and i see people left right and center now just asking chat gpt because it gives you this sort of narrative version back as opposed to just a screed of links which you've then got to go and look at uh, so anyway neva n-e-e-v-a uh, dot com Worth checking out. 50 bucks a year. I'm not convincing anybody, am I? You're all staying with the free food. <laughs> no. no tracking. Yeah. No tracking, Rob. You won't be tracked. You, you know what, Nathan? <laughs> We've had this discussion a million times on this show, my show, other shows, and I'm almost at the point of view where if you feel you don't want to be tracked, you should go live under a bubble on the moon and just cut yourself off from everybody and be no, done with it. No, but Rob, I, you won't be tracked. Yeah, yeah. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, a, I'm just a bit over all that kind of stuff. And and the results are broadly the same. So if, if you were hoping to go there and find like a, a really big difference, no, it, it is more or less the same. Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay, there we go. That's that. Right, last one is Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> like, you know, from the top of the show, we, we, we know that Michelle doesn't do much, frankly. She no, not at all. twiddles her thumbs, <laughs> sits in that chair, twiddling her thumbs, not doing very much. So it's good that you finally found something to do, Michelle. Uh, you've got a new Seriously. project, would you believe? <laughs> this is the WordPress historical timeline. Tell us about this. What's the intention? I should scroll so it this, whilst you're talking. This year is 20 years of WordPress. So this is on May 27th will be 20 years since WordPress launched. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun? You know, if you go to WordPress.org, they have, you know, timelines or whatever that are official timelines, but that's not community driven, right? So those aren't showing things like when, uh, you know, when the first WordCamp in Rochester was. Yes, I have absolutely loaded some of my own issues or my own events in here. I had to prime the pump. Uh, Nathan. So yes. you will see WP motivate and give on there, those kinds of things. But other people have started um, adding things to it. So uh, winning WP, for example, the first WordCamp of Europe, Europe in uh, Leiden, the Netherlands, Taco, um, you know, submitted that one. Um, and those are all links that will open in a new tab to show you that event or a post about that event. And so there it is, the first one back in 2013. So the idea uh, is is you want people to use us. It's user submitted. If you scroll mm -hmm. to the bottom of the timeline, you can see a form. Dead simple. First name, last name, email, uh, the event you want to include, and then when it when when it was. So what month, what year, and uh, don't, don't make yeah. me do the research. Is all I'm asking. Okay. <laughs> and the idea is just over time you want to just grow this timeline and uh, yeah. yeah, a little bit of community fun there. You, you know, can find it's, it. It's just for fun. Where, where, so it's on the post status website, right? This is part of my post status job, yes. So if you go to poststatus.com, see how American I was when I said that? I said post status. Um, I'm, post, I'm glad. Instead of post status. <laughs> status. Yeah, status. Post status. Poststatus.com forward slash WordPress dash historical dash timeline. And uh, you can go and submit your own. Your own bits and pieces there, and Michelle mm -hmm. will be will be given extra jobs to do this week. <laughs> it's not gonna. 
They don't show up immediately, folks. They do come oh, to my yeah. email, and I will get to them when I do. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, you're going to check them all out one at a time. Yeah, that's really nice. Mm-hmm. So one more time, poststatus.com yes. forward slash WordPress forward slash historical forward slash timeline. I saw a, uh, it was an, an article with Emily. No, it was a, it was a shot of Emily Blunt this week, and she was, uh, I think she's got an American husband, and she yeah, has a daughter who's Canadian. American, and it was all about yeah. how, how her daughter said, says the word water. And uh, she started off because she water. She, she water. hung around. Yeah, she hung around <laughs> Emily a lot when she was really, really little. And she would say, "May I have a glass of water?" And uh, and and then apparently just the other week she came over and said, "Can I have a glass of water?" <laughs> it was like Emily was flabbergasted. <laughs> Where did your adorable accent go, child? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. Okay, that's it. That's all I've got. Have I missed anything? Did I miss anything? No. Did, I, did any of your wave. picks get missed? I'm sorry if I did. <laughs> no, I think we got them all, didn't we? Oh, no, I've got to end very quickly. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, Peggy the... <laughs> oh, I don't know. This is... I feel a bit bad doing this. Uh, this is the BBC website showing what is possibly the UK's ugliest dog. And... <laughs> oh, I mean, look at it. I don't it. think there's any possibly <laughs> about it. I, so... I think it, it definitely it's there. is. Right. <laughs> Look at it, right? So you think you think dog. to yourself that picture is staged? They've obviously drawn its tongue out. They've I don't know yeah. shaved it a bit, and then just the cavalcade of photos. <laughs> the photos just keep coming. Look at it. It's like it's like an orc or something like that, isn't it? Oh, bless the little thing. It so, is a thing of nightmares. There it is. Look at it. Are, are you sure that's not a chupacabra? <laughs> Oh, I just think it's quite funny. Anyway, there you go. That's my bombshell. Okay, and last, very, 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 very last thing. I put a cupboard in this room this week, right? Yes. And uh, and I, I, I had a spare shelf at the top <laughs> there, that shelf there. And each week, depending on how, if I can be bothered or not, I'm going to place a new object on that shelf. <laughs> and so I'm going to ask you, what is that object? And you've had the whole episode to try and figure it out. Any ideas what that object is? Did you manage to a figure it out? Container? I'm gonna a go, container? I'm going to go with ship in a bottle. Ship in a bottle? No, I'm sorry. Not a ship in a bottle. Katie, what do you reckon? Yeah, it looks like a trophy. but oh, something. you're on it looks the... Like yes. a bullet list icon. It, so... You're nearly yeah. there. You're almost there. Rob, any ideas? I was thinking a junk container. I'm I'm not even I'm gonna there. go get it. I'm gonna go get it for you and you can see finally what it is after all this time. Oh it is I think you're I think you're on the right track, Katie. I think it's an award. It's an Elementor icon. Elementor, not a bullet list. No, it had oh. something to do with WordPress for the first time. So there you go. Oh, now you know. Maybe, maybe we'll carry that on. Maybe we don't. Maybe, maybe a bit of a damp squib. But, but thank how you. How do you get that? You have to tell the story. Well, I was thinking I could offer a prize if somebody. Oh, I got it. I just got it um, because. I don't know. I don't know. You didn't they love you. I got it through the post because I helped them at, right at the beginning when they needed help. I was uh, nice. one of the people that mentioned their plugin rather a lot. I think they were grateful. So I got an, a nice little award. So next week, I'll put something different up there. Maybe I'll offer a prize. Who knows? There you somebody go. that can identify it's going to be on the show. <laughs> but thank you, Michelle, for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Katie, oh, for joining us. And thank you, Rob, for joining us. This will come out thank tomorrow, you. 7 a.m. UK time. It'll come out as a podcast episode. We'll be back next week with a bunch of different people. Don't forget, go to the Page Builder Summit. If you're a sponsor, we'd love to have you on. Otherwise, go to Barn 2. Go to all the links that Michelle mentioned at the beginning. Go to Rob's website. Make them happy. And we'll see you next week. We've got a wave. Oh, look at that. It was like Pavlovian. Three, two of you just did it straight You're well away. well trained. And Katie wasn't far behind. I really appreciate it. Have a good day, everybody.